It's going to be delivered uh, by uh, Katrin Friesemo, and she she's an entrepreneur and she is also an author. She she published a book called Wiffle 2.0, and Wiffle, I hope I pronounce it correctly, stands for uh, Work in Fake Life. Work in Fake Life 2.0. Uh, Dean Guide til the Digitala Arbats Libet. And she, uh, Katrin, has a background in, in social studies. She's been researching uh, leadership, uh, work structure, work organizations, uh, health, and so on. So she gives us a very interesting perspective to our, our topic here today. And her presentation is called Dig Digitalized Work Life New Conditions and Opportunities. Please take the floor, Katrin. How could you start, uh, quit your job at a Swedish telephone company and start working as a development engineer in a non-future business as the computer business and on top of that work for IBM? That was the scenario in our living room 1969 when my father started working for IBM. In the mid-70s, I lived in Silicon Valley. In the mid-80s, I worked for digital equipment, uh, launching the first color screen. And digital equipment um, had a business idea to work and build PC networks. And by that time, they said there were no future for PC networks. OK, so the previous speaker was from the ancient ages, and I'm from Jurassic Park ages then. <laughs> so let's see. OK. Uh, we have to think digital and we have to think analog. To me, this is past tense. I use Google Maps or Maps to Go when I arrived in Reykjavik. Uh, a typewriter um, is a printer, maybe a 3D printer nowadays. A newspaper is um, in my iPhone. And this reminds me that I'm from Jurassic Park age. Anyway, power in the network society is communication power. And this is the workplace nowadays, right? You need Wi-Fi, you need some electricity, you need a mobile device and the cloud, and then you can work everywhere. The trends in work life 3.0, as I call it, is social media, smartphones, tablets, Internet of Things, use of video, and big data. Everything is connected. We're always connected. Increased collaboration, increased efficiency of networks, social media and work, and business lives. So what I'm actually talking about here today is that we have to change our mindset. This is what I found out about Iceland, and I just can say congratulations. You're number one in the world using internet. Hooray for you. Good start. 59% are connected outside home and workplaces. 67% purchase online. So back then, this was an early job fair, right? It was quite easy. Now, these are the demands. You need good self-knowledge and to be secure of themselves. <clears throat> Driven and taking initiatives. You need to be self-efficient and disciplined. You need to engage and be responsible. And look for and assimilate knowledge and judge its relevance. Market and sell our competences. We have to have computer knowledge, English, and coding. Is coding mandatory here in Iceland in schools? No, no, not neither in Sweden as well. I'm from Sweden. But I know there are some countries that, that it, uh, coding is mandatory in schools. I think it's um, England and Germany, anyone, or uh, France. Anyway, uh, this is what people call the new Latin, coding. So if you have kids, let them start code. 
Um, in, uh, I work a lot in the Öresund region, Malmö, Copenhagen. And in Malmö, they have uh, at least, uh, tw I think twice now a week at Folk Cafe, Kodo Dojos for kids eight and older. Um, you need good skills of communication, and especially in writing. Okay, have everyone, anyone heard the, the um, story about the zebra that wanted to be a lion? No? Well, because there's none. Uh, the point here is that um, you know Slatan, right? You, at least if you're into football, I guess you know who he is. What about if Slatan's teachers or Slatan himself had thought, oh, I'm so good at football anyway, so I should focus on things that I'm not so good at? And quit, you know, and the teachers would have told him that skip football because you have to, whatever, raise your grades in something else that you're not so good at. I never understand the point of that. I know a lot of parents does that too. They said, you know, the kids get home from school with their grades and or sit down with the teacher and say, oh, you're so good at this, but you're not so good at this. So you, you know, focus on the things that you're not good at. And to me, it does not make sense. Why should you? Really? Uh, so, and I think this is really important in the new work life. Because how are you otherwise going to compete with those people, especially young people that just go for what they're good at? And why should you not use your talents? I mean, I suck at cooking. So why should, should I be a chef then? Nah, it's just a waste of time. Um, I have three superpowers. Do you know your own superpowers? Have you ever thought about your superpowers? I have three superpowers. You want to know them? <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a good writer. I'm very good at um, following my own heart, following my own passion. It's not easy all the time because most of the time I'm considered to be a lunatic. But after a while, people, well, it makes me happy. And the third part is I'm damn good at fika. Does anyone know who fi what fika is? Yay! <laughs> it's, it's the uh, uh, holiest part in Swedish work life. <laughs> it's having a coffee break in the morning and a coffee break in the afternoon. You're having a fika. And it's actually lunch now, um, a fika chain in New York. So it's go we're going international. But um, it's a point to Fika because that's where you're networking. You sit down, you have a coffee with a friend or at Starbucks or whatever, uh, or at the workplace, and you start networking, you start talking to each other. Uh, and I love networking. And that's really essential, both online and offline uh, in the new uh, work life. It's always been important with big networks or networking but you need to use both online and offline networks. Um, so be, bring out your superpowers and be who you are. Why should you not? Okay, work in the workplace. Work is something you do, not the place you go to. And result-only work environment is growing uh, and growing and becoming more incre increasingly important. These are some of my workplaces. It, the beach is at Tillusan on the west coast of Sweden. They have Wi-Fi on the beach, provided by Hotel Tillusan. Um, train stations, airplanes, whatever. So actually, uh, you can work, like I said before, Wi-Fi, mobile device, some electricity, uh, access to the cloud. So I think we have to rethink what is work. And what is a workplace? One of my favorite workplaces are Starbucks at Malmö Central Station. I have my meetings there. Actually, we had uh, an event there last year at Microsoft's uh, Work From Home Day. So we invited a lot of people. We uh, uh, booked half Starbucks, and we had um, Microsoft people on uh, on the screen, 
uh, direct to Starbucks in Malmö Central Station. There were sofas there and chairs, and just to show that this is a workplace as well. Okay, this is what it looks like in Iceland. You probably know that 33% uh, percent of enterprises receive orders via internet. That's quite a high level. And 43% purchase cloud computing services. I just can say congratulations. You're way ahead of time. We had to think, rethink digital, uh, we had to rethink business models. There are nine business models that already 2006 was um, identified by Michael Rappa at North Carolina State University. And this changes our lives. So you, I don't think you can separate ordinary life, I mean private life and work life anymore in the way we used to. I think that where the industrial area, era is just a parenthesis in our history. Before we were working as far, I mean, if you look back before the industrial age, we did not separate work and private life as we have. And we're moving back to it in this transition from the industrial age into the digitized age. Business life is also about social business, as previous uh, speakers has been talking about. And we could just not ignore it. The economy, the financial systems is changing. We're going towards crowdsourcing more and more. We have different digital uh, monetary systems. We have Bitcoin, for example. Um, do you know that, did you know that uh, Microsoft nowadays accept Bitcoin as a currency to pay for its services? So it's just not something that's happening. Bitcoin is getting bigger and digitized <coughs> uh, money as well. This is, uh, so the key issues of authenticity, transparency, and communication skills. These are really three issues, key issues in work life 3.0. Uh, the transparency, because it's transparent with all the social media. Uh, most of the people have a smartphone or a mobile device of some kind. You never know whose picture you're going to be sp spread on with on, on the mobile devices. Authenticity, again, you have to be authentic in your business and in your life. And communication skills. Okay, successful communication. Be who you are. You need to develop good skills in communication. IFL stands for in fake life. If you're wondering if you haven't seen that abbreviation before. And I came up with it when I was writing my book that I published about a year ago because I was kind of trying to describe the, the difference between the analog or the IRL world. And then I was thinking, well, hmm, what am I describing? Is that fake life then, if the other thing is re real life? So that's why IFL came up. You have to pay attention and engage, of course. You have to listen, and I should say actually listen, 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 because that's the most important part in, com in successful communication. You have to reflect and you have to talk, then talk. Givers gain. And remember the six W's, uh, who, what, when, where, why, and how. That takes you through life. OK, some of the social media channels that's available out there for you. And these are not all of them. Um, <coughs> uh, so if you, uh, or when you go on social media, think about why if you should be there and there, and also why, what's the purpose for you being in social media? Be selective. But you need to be, at least if you're running a business, in some of the social media channels, because otherwise your business is going to die. There are different cultures in social media, and those are also changing. Uh, these are some. Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, YouTube, StumbleUpon, Pinterest, um, Reddit, Blogger, um, 
Tumblr and Flickr, just some of the most common uh, social media accounts. This is how big it is, or was uh, 2013. And I was really impressed when I found these numbers of Iceland, from Iceland, 220,000 Iceland Icelanders on uh, social media. That's really, really impressive. And as a business, you cannot ignore it then, if you're here. And of course, businesses outside Iceland so really should be aware of this. By the way, I've been Twittering about it today. <laughs> and Facebooking and Instagramming and LinkedIn. And, and social media behavior is also changing the way we interact within companies. Because we're taking our behavior that we had pr in private into businesses, and that's how we want to communicate. So, okay, so how many in here uses email as a primary um, ch uh, channel for communication? Emailing each other? Okay, how many is texting as a primi primarily communication? No. There's some under 20 or 25 or something. <laughs> And this is actually a picture of the, the work life as well. Me from Jurassic Park age, and usually those above 30 or so, we use email as a source for our communication tool, primarily. Um, those under 30 or 25 text and chat. Uh, so this is, uh, so it's changing within big companies as well. Um, my live, it's a uh, Swedish uh, uh, internal um, uh, I internet and that you could take a look at because it's integrated with blogs and all different kinds of social media functions. Okay, job search, it's about networking. Uh, different communities for different occupations, social media, flow pages and groups, digital recruitment sites, just an example of two video recruiting CVs um, to Swedish um, sites. That's what's really on the rise, video recruiting. Okay, all this then requires a new kind of leadership. It needs to be authentic. You need to be courageous. Well, maybe you always need to be courageous to be a leader. Uh, but you also need to be transparent. OK, so why Malmö Fire Brigade? Um, in my, one of my previous jobs, um, I identified in a European network uh, four models of good practices of health promoting uh, companies or, bis or, or work organizations. And Malmö Fire Brigade was actually chosen one of them. <coughs> and one thing that we looked at, um, by the way, do you know the two most important key factors for creating a healthy workplace? Can you guess? Any guesses? Leadership and work organization. Those are the two uh, absolutely most important uh, key factors for creating a healthy work environment for productivity, for he uh, employee health, and for um, work, uh, uh, environmental issues. And that's also uh, the key for successful businesses, or will be uh, anyway. There is actually a European network called European Network for Workplace Health Promotion. Uh, that's been, I was part of it since 1997. It's an EU financed uh, network. Uh, it's called, and the slogan is healthy employees and healthy organizations. And you need to take into co consideration both health, um, work envi uh, environmental issues, and uh, of course economics. Um, uh, and the basis for running a company is healthy, uh, that, that's healthy employees. I made a study in 1998, Jurassic Park age, it seems like too, uh, on mid-sized IT companies in Sweden while I was writing my thesis. And uh, 
they scored really high on all different kind of <coughs> factors and it, they consider it really important to create a healthy workplace. Uh, because they, as uh, my hypothesis was that when the if the employees get sick or quit, the value of the company is non-existent because the value of the company is the intellectual cap capital, the employees. How could otherwise, um, uh, Mojang was sold 22 employees to Facebook. He got pretty well paid for those 22 employees. That's what they bought, the knowledge and, of course, some um, data and statistics on the customers. Anyway, Malmö Fire Brigade, they have the leadership there. Uh, uh, you have to manage the new leaders to be both manager and leader. You have to lead, you have to be, um, if you want to make a difference in between that. But I do, because um, like if you're on a fire, you cannot start asking your employees, OK, this is participatory, should we do this? In what way should we do this? And so forth. Then you, in that situation, you have to be really clear who's doing what and when. <coughs> but on the, at the base, you could have a participatory uh, leadership. And you need to, in the new work life, I think, anyway, um, you be able to use both skills or those sides. Help, I've been talking about. Challenges, stress and burnout. How is it, what is it like in Iceland? Anyone? Do you have a high or a low grade of burnouts here? No, you don't know? Okay. It, it's a problem anyway in, in, the other, in Sweden and other European countries. People are totally stressed out and the psychological health, uh, mental health is not very well. And one thing, you know what? Stress makes you stupid. So don't stress. And, and it's just, uh, you mess up a lot of stuff. And it, 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 I have a background in physiology as well. And it's just a normal physio physiological reaction. Because you're, if you're stressed out, you're, you're, your whole body system makes you stupid. Especially the long-term, low-frequent stress level that you most of the time not aware of messes up your, your um, skills and uh, your systems. And if you don't recover continuously, um, that's what causes uh, the ma majority of the health problems. Ergonomics. Have you heard about the iPad neck? <laughs> no, it, it's true. There's a diagnosis in the US called iPad neck. And actually, there's changes in the skeleton in the neck of people around the 20s because this. So think about it next time. Uh, do you know how much your, your head, the weight of your head is? Anyone? 4.5 kilos about. It's quite heavy. So ergonomics, um, I cheat sometimes, um, but I, I, have, I do have a neck injury, not from that, but a whiplash injury. Um, when you're working, like at, at an airplane or whatever, um, use maybe care with you a, a wireless um, keyboard. Uh, to increase your, um, uh, to, to have better, better ergonomics for yourself. M Health, that's a good business area to be in, just so you know, if you don't. Okay, I'll sum it up. So su successful work life 3.0 is about be who you truly are, engage through socializing, interacting, and communicating. And that is to create interpersonal relationships. Uh, and that's about social business. Well, so all I've got to say is enjoy and have a nice week.
Thank you, Katrin. Before we all uh, uh, rush to our, our coffee break, uh, would we like to ask Katrin some questions? It's difficult to see here. I don't think you're totally clear. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Good that they, they all rush at once. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so okay. Any, any last words before we? Well, I'll see you IFL, I guess. Okay, <laughs> excellent. Bye, thank you for listening. Thanks.